You're watching Hot Fuzz Live. I'm Nancy Red. Now, an argument with your partner can be intense, heated, and explosive. But so can what happens in the bedroom after the fight. Now, makeup sex may be the punctuation of an argument, but is it really bringing you closer to a resolution? Today, we have the do's and don'ts of makeup sex with the fantastic Kathleen Mallet, Denise Charles, and Mary Jo Fay. Hi, ladies. Hi. Well, we invited a man onto this segment. He's late. I don't know if he's having makeup sex with someone, but each of you have your own experiences with makeup sex. Now, Denise, I got to go to you first because you had a very positive outcome to some makeup sex. Tell us about that. Yes, I did. Um, he's a really tall, handsome 19 year old son <laughs> that I now have. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> he's usually embarrassed whenever I talk about it, but I, I've said it openly in public forum before. Yes, I can't remember exactly what my husband and I were, were angry about, but I remember that the outcome was my son. Well, and um, <laughs> so, so, what <laughs> happens? So, you get in this fight. And, and does, did, for you, does fighting normally turn into num-nums, or was this a, an unusual experience? No, it wasn't an, an unusual experience. It wasn't the only experience we would have had um, with respect to makeup sex, but it was the one that is most memorable. I, I don't think that it's a routine that we practice constantly, but it has had its place in our marriage over the years. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations to your 19-year-old son. See, Mary Jo Fay, makeup sex isn't all bad. He's going to be horrified when he hears this. No oh, worries. you've done worse, I'm sure. We moms can find many ways to make our children uncomfortable. Uh, Mary Jo Fay, uh, we have a comment here that I think that you'll appreciate. Delea Lugo, makeup sex is not bad if done in moderation. Couples should work on the problems before the same ones flare up again. You're a wonderful relationship coach. You help individuals find the best cells, find the best cells within relationships. Makeup sex is not something that should be the go-to. Well, I think it ends up, sooner or later you have sex if you're in a relationship and everybody gets mad at some point. So everybody probably has some sort of makeup sex at some point. The thing that I like to make really clear to my clients is that men and women see makeup sex very differently. Frequently the man, let's say we have an argument about he was supposed to take out the garbage last night and he forgot and it got left for me to do. And now I'm really mad about it. I don't want to just go have sex to make it up. That's what a guy tends to do. They tend to say, well, let's just have sex and it'll all be okay. Women want to be made up before they have sex. The sex is the great part that comes after, not the part that makes it all better. And so you're right, your uh, comment by your reader is right. The communication has got to be there. Or the sex is the sex. but. Holding the glue together for the relationship isn't enough with just the sex, unfortunately, over time. Absolutely. Now, Kat, I'm sure that you agree. You've been with your wife for nine years. You also don't think that makeup sex is all that great. Oh, it's probably my least favorite type of sex. I mean, I prefer, prefer normal sex where you haven't been arguing and fighting. Um, so, yes, I would, I would agree that it's not my favorite. Least favorite? How could it possibly be? Oh my gosh. Neil, we're so glad you could join. Were you off having some makeup sex? I was actually. <laughs> I uh, excuse my uh, uh, excuse my bedhead here. Let me let me just try to make it look worse than it already is. Um, I, I can't believe that's the worst. You know. All right. Well, anyway, we'll get we'll get back to you in a minute. Well, let's get to you because we've just had some different experiences. Denise is a relationship expert. She actually has a son born from makeup sex. Mary wow. Jo Fay suggests that men and women see makeup sex differently. As a bisexual, Neil, what's yes. your take? You are with both men and women. You've had makeup sex with yes. both sexes. What's your take yes. on makeup have, wait, sex wait, being... Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Have I? Let's see. Uh, well, yes, okay, I have. That's true. I, I have had makeup sex with both. Genders. Now, uh, don't ask me which gender is better after they're more angry because it gets kind of complicated. Well, it's also an individual issue. Denise, you've seen many people with, with different issues. What, as someone who, you know, you can't say you haven't had makeup sex before. Obviously. No, I haven't. Uh, so no, how, how, do you, how do you advise individuals? More than once. <laughs> Personality has a lot to do with it. Um, I don't think it's necessarily for everyone. 
I am pretty much the traditional woman who still likes to talk things over. Um, if my husband is angry with me about something or I'm angry with him, I would prefer to go the route of a conversation. I would prefer to talk over the issue. Um, but at the same time, because sex is so powerful, I understand that it does have a role to play in mending fences. And if yeah. you've been having a challenge, you know, why not use something, a fun approach, you know, to, to get him to glue back together? I have an idea, though. It's not though. the solution Wouldn't in it? itself, but it can certainly break down the barriers to open the conversation. Wouldn't it be amazing if all of us on the panel got really, really angry with each other and then just sort of like had makeup sex to figure it all out, like, you know, in person? Well, it would depend on your goals. I mean, here's the thing, Mary Jo. There's sex and then there's intimacy. And I think when you're talking about your long-term partner who you want to stay with for a while, you have to make sure that the twain are entwined when they're supposed to be and separate when they're supposed to be, right? Well, you know, there's intimacy and there's sex. There's a, I was just reading on your site today about somebody that's talking about blogging about how you should have sex on the first date. That's sex. It's not intimacy. It's not closeness. It's not trust. It's not any of those things. And it's not necessarily wrong. But if you're looking to have a long-term relationship and build it on trust and understanding and all of that, you can't go screaming into the night every other week and have a big riff and then expect it to be made up. And then yeah, if you're... I, 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 I almost... Uh, uh, what? That's all right, right, Neil. All right. I, I, know, I know you're coming off of some endorphins, but we can't interrupt individuals. We can piggyback <laughs> okay, on each other's no conversation. Okay, you know, but I, I don't think it should happen in that way. Because, uh, I've been married 21 years. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll tell you, the, um, it wasn't a, it, there was a, it, you know, it, it started with an argument. That's all I could, that's all, that's all I'll say. All right, Mary Jo, come back in. Let's finish what you were saying. Because as an intimacy well, expert, you teach intimacy classes. Uh, you've been through this many times. Yeah, I have the intimacy college where I, I really work with people to understand sex better, especially from the woman's side of things. And the, one of the big key pieces that always blows the guys away that are coming to my classes when I say there's two big things about guys and women. Men are like microwaves. Women are like crockpots. So if the guy's just thinking, well, we're going to have makeup sex now, and he's ready to roll in five minutes and expects her to be there, it ain't happening. She's a crockpot. She takes longer than that. Men need a, a place. Women need a reason. She's there putting all of these different things together, and it gets very complicated about how you're going to solve it if you believe that your way of looking at the world is the way your partner is looking at the world. Kat, you a crockpot? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the Maury Povich show here. I actually completely disagree with that point of view, but uh, don't let me, you know, dominate the conversation, so I'll just wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Denise, I, I think, well, Denise, are you trying to get in there? Yes, I was. I was saying, though, that might be true to some extent. Um, women, we still understand the power of sex. And I think oh, because yeah. we do, um, we understand how our sexuality can have an impact on men. Um, when our guy is, is, is angry with us, um, you know, we use it. some of us will use it to the hilt and not feel there's anything wrong with going down those barriers. I have heard, I, I had a husband say to me once, that the only time his wife goes out of the way to try to seduce him is when he's angry with her. Um, mm. Some people might say, well, that's um, bad, that's poor communication. Not necessarily. Um, the sex isn't an end in itself, but it can be the beginning point, as I said before, to opening up the conversation to deeper issues. Because we all know that sex gets a guy in a very good mood. Hopefully gets everybody and, in a good mood. And he'll be willing to talk. And it's interesting. Yes, hopefully, hopefully both parties look at sex as something yeah. that gets them in the good mood. Which, again, it, again, sex in a relationship is a very complicated thing. If, if both parties always enjoy sex, then both parties hopefully will enjoy the makeup sex. If one person doesn't necessarily enjoy the sex and they're just having makeup sex because they're hoping that the fight will go away, you got problems. But here's the thing. Yeah. We, we, we are a small group here. Many of you have worked with so many individuals. Neil, I know that you're the editor at BastardLife.com, and you actually had a poll with many of your readers about makeup sex. What was the general consensus of individuals uh, who came on to talk about makeup sex? 
Well, well in all seriousness, uh, you know, the, 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 we, what we did was we pulled about, uh, I think it was like 1,203 people, to be exact, um, through the site. And, you know, what, what we got was like 72% of the folks, of course, said that makeup sex was great. Um, but to the point of the professor, uh, the lack of intimacy really is, uh, at the end of the day, something that folks um, commented on the most. And, and, and I'll say that um, I really think that that's a really poignant thing to, to, to stress, that, you know, the lack of intimacy is, is uh, you know, it's, it's something very serious in sexuality and human relationships. Um, I just want to uh, emphasize, that, however, that the um, you know the prevalence of of this thing we call makeup sex is it is out there and it's 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 happening you know and it I, I wonder and and I'd almost like to do another poll uh, can it lead to intimacy can it can it be the conduit to intimacy and that's something that would be interesting to uh, you know discuss. Can I jump I in here? What's been your experience in a long-term relationship? I, I know you say that it's your least favorite type of sex, but do you feel that makeup sex is necessary? Do you think that it's something that can lead to intimacy? You're asking me? I didn't hear you. Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Um, I think it is really important to be able to get over dramas and fights and let go of resentment and be able to be intimate again after a difficult period. That's really important. Um, I, I think the bigger the fight, the longer that takes, mm -hmm. and that can be anywhere from like a few days to a few weeks. Like I don't, we don't just tear each other's clothes off after an argument <laughs> and like resolve it that way. Like it takes a few days for me to come around and be intimate yeah. again and trust. Yeah, the crock pot you know? part. Yeah, the crock pot. <laughs> I need to um, just calm down and forgive and be able to relax and let go and even have sex. So it can be hard. That's my point earlier. The guys are waiting for you to be ready to jump into bed to fix it just by having sex. Based on what you're just telling me, it's exactly my same theory is that it takes women a while. You know, our biggest sex organ is truly our brain. So until you're on the same plane with that one, you can really be, you know, holding your breath a long time before you get to make out. Although I must say I've known plenty of uh, women who were uh, microwaves and not crock pots, I'll tell you that. Well, it's not 100%. Denise, well, here's the thing. Whether you're a microwave or a crock pot, whether you think makeup sex increases in, uh, uh, intimacy or not, one thing is for sure. Hopefully, if you're taking the time out of your day to have sex, it's good. And so here's the thing. You've got this book right here, How to Have Mind-Blowing Sex Without Losing your brain. When you wrote this book, what do you think some of the tips are for individuals? One of the things that when you get into a fight, right, it's difficult to get regain the intimacy. So do you think that sometimes uh, if thought of properly, could make up sex be a great way to make sure that the fight doesn't go on so long? Yes, I think so. As I said earlier, I don't think it's an end in itself, and it doesn't have to be the symptom of a dysfunctional relationship. There are dysfunctional relationships where individuals will be habitually using makeup sex, and I think that is problematic, and it speaks to the need um, for communication, for reflection on the health of the relationship. But in a normal relationship, which is functioning um, pretty normally in, in, in most respects, I think that the occasional fight ending up in sex, that there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, um, if individuals are using sex to control or coerce each other into doing things they don't want to do, well, that's, that's something entirely different. But I think for a couple who has a relatively healthy relationship and they, they you know, they became unglued over some few using their sexy time together to reconnect and to open the channels for communication that is absolutely nothing wrong with that but it should be managed it should be you know you should make sure that it's overdone it's not a solution because sex is not a solution to a problem i don't even though makeup sex has its benefits i don't think that sex should be seen as the solution 
And even though men and women do behave differently, um, we can't always draw it straight across the board because we know that there are women who know how to use, who love sex and know how to use it very well in their relationships. Uh, and there are That's men who might not want to point. have sex yeah. when there's been a fight. Well, that's an excellent point. And here's the thing. This is an important point for our viewers who are watching. The key is also a healthy relationship. Mary Jo Fay, you have here on your website, is there a narcissist in your life? It's important to note that many times, just to get you quiet or just to like make sure that the point stayed on the partner's life who happens to be the narcissist or the abusive, whether verbally or physically abusive individual, sex is an easy way to, to stop the conversation at a, at a high point for one person. So it is important when you're talking about make, make up sex as not necessarily being a positive, especially in unhealthy relationships. Yeah. Oh gosh, then it's a tool. Then it's a, a power tool, you know? Then it's, I'm the, I'm the abuser, I'm gonna use sex either to withhold it from you if I know you want it, or demand more of it from you if I know you don't want it. So then the whole make up sex rule goes out the window because then it's about one person dominating the other without the other's choice. I mean, I think makeup sex is is uh, is, is is a really something that, in my opinion, uh, should be. Uh, and this is again, I'm just I'm just speaking from the point of view of my readers. Um, is is really kind of a rare occurrence. And if it isn't, then you know other things need to be examined. Uh, and I think to the professor's point, um, you know, there are ways that. Uh, abuse in a, in, in a way can be fostered by these episodes of uh, anger than sex, anger than sex. And I think it's uh, it can be very unhealthy. Right. And so that, that's absolutely the point. I, and it's important to note that there is a healthy relationship type of makeup sex and an unhealthy yeah. relationship yeah. Uh, type of makeup sex. Kathleen, uh, I want to get you back into the conversation. We appreciate you being here. Uh, from your perspective, is it do you, in in the instance that you have to end up in this situation? What are ways that one can make it uh, more useful to prolonging the relationship, to increasing the conversation, like between you and your wife? When you get into a fight, whether it's makeup sex or not, how do you resolve the fight so that there aren't hurt feelings or there aren't uh, there isn't lost intimacy? Um, we kind of have to go our separate ways. I mean, within the same face obviously and do our own thing and calm down um and that helps us to just you know collect ourselves and and our behavior you know and not stop yelling and all that so that really helps some time maybe a day or two to, just to forget about it um but we do communicate we're, we're like i didn't like that you did this well, great i didn't like that you did that i mean we do hash it out as as ugly as it can get but um, we do work it out in the end. We've been together for nine years, my wife and I, so we've definitely had our share of fights and we've had to learn how to love each other at the end of the day, at the end of the fight, and rub each other's back and have sex, you know? So um, I guess just treating each other nicely and trying to make up for the ugliness is, is how we go about it. So. You know, I think one of the things to be important in everybody's plan in any argument is to make sure that whatever you say or do, it's not the genie you can't put back in the bottle. In other words, don't say something that you're going to say you didn't mean later because those things are the ones that stay in your heart. So the makeup sex is great because you can say, gosh, I'm sorry I called you a bitch. I really love you, blah, blah, blah. But if you're doing that every week and calling her a bitch every week, after a while it doesn't mean anything anymore. It's back to the same Name calling and it's and the makeup sex chemistry is not yeah. continuing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think we all can agree that the most important thing is no matter how long it is after a fight, whether it is immediately or a day or two days or a week, that the number one relationship killer is really the lack of intimacy. So whether you call it makeup sex or not, hopefully, eventually, soon after a fight, you are able to get back up on the horse. No pun intended. <laughs> well, I, I, I've done polls about this on, on BastardLife.com where, you know, folks, um, look, it's all fun to kind of, you know, joke a little bit about these uh, escapades in various ways about sexuality. But at the end of the day, uh, both men and women do prefer intimacy over, se over pure sex. I mean, it, it's a fact. I mean, guys might well be... Uh, microwaves but at the end of the day 
when you dig a little bit deeper into what people really want, it's it's intimacy. Even men at the bastard life. Oh, absolutely. I think, I think absolutely. we, we shouldn't necessarily separate the two. I know people can have sex that is not intimate. I think in a fairly healthy relationship, the sex is intimate. It is exposing. It, it has the potential to reveal. And um, I think, therefore, we need, we need to look at the sex in that type of relationship as an extension of communication and not as something out there happening by itself. And then communication through verbal means is seen separately. I think sex is a form of communication. And um, a apart from the oohs and the ahs, I think that is a part. It does speak volumes. And um, I agree if you've had a, a disagreement with your partner and then you're able to have intercourse with your partner, I think that it says a lot about how you feel about it can it can be a wake up call for yourself in terms of what you're not willing to to lose in the relationship. So I think it is a very powerful communicator, and we and we, and we don't need to tr to trivialize it as I agree. inferior to spoken communication. I, One I, thing I think there's more. there's good sex and there's bad sex, and bad sex, in my opinion, is never um, something I'd rather have as opposed to no sex. So. When it comes to makeup sex, for everybody involved, you hope it's good sex. If it's not, that's going to not help you with the makeup either. It's well, true. That's, a, that's an excellent matter. point. I think that those are words to live by. No sex is better than bad sex, especially when it comes to the makeup land. But we're grateful that you all could take the time to join us to talk about this very sensitive and important issue in every relationship. So thank you, Kat, Denise, Mary Jo, thank and Neil. You. Thank you. Thank you. So, so More information much. on our guests and the work that they do is in our resource well, which is underneath this video screen. So make sure you check them out because they're awesome people. And thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for watching. Keep watching, checking out what's coming up next. Because here at HuffPost Live, the conversation always continues. Thanks to you.